Now we know it's been done already, but come on, in fairness, we thought about doing this a long time ago. It just takes a while for stuff to ship from wish.com. You guys loved our Amazon and Monoprice PC build so much that we couldn't resist the urge to do it again, but with a sketchier twist. So uh, strap on guys, because I can pretty much guarantee that this is not gonna go according to plan. Speaking of unplanned, I should have planned a better segue to our sponsor, Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can monitor the apps on your PC to see if any of them are suspicious or behaving badly. Check it out at the link below and use offer code Linus to get 25% off Glasswire. All right, step one, put on my LTT hoodie, lttstore.com. Step two, let's start unpacking this stuff. So first up is our case. You can tell that it's super high quality because even with my weak sauce left arm, I am easily manhandling it here. Let's go ahead and do a nice little peel for you guys. Ah, yes. Oh, oh, that was not a good peel. You know what, the case though, actually feels better quality than the plastic cut. Ooh. Oh crap, I bent it. Uh, so I was holding it by the I.O. cutout and I actually warped it a little bit. I think I'll pick it up the way you're intended to from now on. Features wise though, this actually doesn't look that bad. We've got three front USBs, including a USB 3 power reset, uh, front ports, we've got Wow, an easily removable magnetic fan filter with room for a couple of 120 millimeter fans up here. It actually includes what appears to be a 120 millimeter RGB fan, although it may just be that the label is red, green, and blue. Uh, the side panel mounts in like this tempered glass style, but this is in fact an acrylic side panel. And then check this out. It's got that punched out style uh, back panel. So you've actually got a little bit of room for cable management back here. I mean, not a ton, but a little bit is better than nothing. That is a weird fan. Like it's a 120 millimeter frame, but those blades are tiny. So this is what I'm talking about. Look how big the blades are on that 120 millimeter versus the other one. It's like a 90 millimeter fan in a 120 millimeter frame. It's got this like thick, frame on it, it's weird. Now this is a cool feature. You've actually got color coding on your switches and your LEDs here. And it seems to correspond to the colors that at least some manufacturers use. I'm pretty sure Asus uses blue for reset. How much should we pay for this thing? 97 years old. Nine, what? So apparently cases are not actually a great deal on wish.com. At least it has a tempered glass front panel. All right, let's open up our next mystery package here. Ah, a motherboard. What is with all the bubble wrap around this thing? I mean, <laughs> in fairness, it still looks like it was, got drop kicked. So there, there's a couple takeaways here. One, all the extra packaging seems to be justified. And two, the way that they're applying their extra packaging is not very effective. Oh, so that's interesting. Yeah, this motherboard is not that at all. Um, Full testing, okay. All right. So this is clearly a very used board. Was it clear from the listing that it was gonna be used? Okay, how much did we pay for this bad boy? $46 for an H61 board? That's not even a good deal. Why do people buy this stuff? And like, do you know how much these socket covers cost if you buy them in bulk? I know, pennies. They put a piece of paper in. Look at this. That's it, that's their, that's their socket cover. Now in fairness, it doesn't look like there are any bent pins, so that's good, but it's still not how I would have preferred it done. All right, we also apparently have a CPU and it comes in what looks like a compact flash card case, which I guess is kind of cute. It's an Intel Core i3-2130. I guess this was just what CPU they had that was compatible with what board they had kind of thing. How much did we pay for this guy? $49. 50 bucks? Seriously? This is a ripoff. So already 
For the price of this CPU and motherboard, we probably could have gotten like an old Dell business PC that would have included case, power supply, uh, probably a drive, some RAM, and we could have just like thrown a graphics card in it, but what the heck. So I was informed before we started that I actually have two options for coolers. I have this Great Wall heatsink cooler. I am kind of liking this. This is actually very similar to the old Zalman flower coolers that used to be popular back in the socket 754 days. So that's candidate number one. And candidate number two is actually an AIO liquid cooler. I mean, it shouldn't surprise me given that they're all basically made in China anyway, but this looks very, very similar in materials and construction to what you'd get from an AIO cooler that you purchased just normally off of Amazon or whatever. Tubing wise, like seems like the materials they're using are okay. It feels like an aluminum radiator. It's pretty light, but that should be fine. Except that there's a copper block, except that some manufacturers do that. I don't know what they're doing. I think they're crazy. Okay, you know what? If the AIO fits, then we're gonna go with that. But uh, it's no guarantee that we're gonna be able to get it in here because even though this does have mounts for dual 120 millimeter fans up here, that doesn't mean that there's gonna be enough clearance once we install a power supply. Uh, and no, in fact, there isn't. So it looks like we cannot use our AIO cooler and we are unfortunately going to be stuck with our regular heat sink. So how much were each of those? So our theme continues of our prices, not necessarily being outlandishly bad on these ones. I'd say 80 bucks for like a I don't know, kind of decent looking AIO is fine, but it's certainly not special. Okay, so it should just be a matter of throwing our clips on here and clip one and clip two. Give it a little wiggle and plug in. Did we also buy RAM off Wish? Oh, there it is. Oh, wow, that is some, uh, Hey, they, wait a second. Wait a second. I am pretty sure that they don't have the rights to use this image. So this is Viseki High Performance DDR. And you can tell that they're really high budget and care a lot about their packaging when they use the same packaging for everything from DDR3-1333 to DDR4-3200. Like, ah, eh, it's some of this. Something like that. Let's go ahead and install this stuff. So this is uh, DDR3-1333. I'm super glad we spent money on this. How much did we spend? $40 on uh, eight gigs. You know what? I think that's actually not entirely unreasonable. The funny thing about memory is when like a new memory spec, like DDR2 or DDR3 or whatever, uh, just comes out, it's really expensive and then it gets cheap when the entire market adopts it. Then it gets expensive again when it becomes like old technology and it's more niche. All right, so there we go, friends. I'm gonna plug our case fan into the bottom of the motherboard here. Wow, that's really curious. This case, you know, it actually looked okay at the start there, but it is pretty unexceptional. Like, check this out. Our bottom fan here, which is pre-installed, and it seems to me that the reason it's pre-installed is that almost none of the other fan mounts are even gonna be accessible because of the tempered glass panel here and the power supply here actually interferes with what would be the bottom slot if we had a full four slot MATX motherboard. Like this, this thing, this thing is not very well thought out at all. Now seems like a good opportunity to get back to our solid state drive. Uh, it's another Viseki product. This is the V800 256G. At least this one is clearly labeled. But I do have to wonder if this is kind of an old box. Like, didn't Sandforce get acquired like a thousand years ago by someone? I'd be surprised if it even uses a Sandforce controller. Wow. Oh, it just, it just comes apart. Oh, maybe we can see what it uses. This is nothing to do with Sandforce whatsoever. It's a Silicon Magic controller, but not the one that's listed online, which is actually good because at least this one's SATA 3, unlike the SATA 2 one that it says this product uses. Unfortunately, this is in fact a DRAM cacheless SSD. There is no 
RAM on it whatsoever. And we did a video about that a while back explaining why that is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. And in some cases, you might even get better performance out of a mechanical hard drive compared to a cashless SSD. So um, there you go. I mean, it's nothing we didn't already know, but we wouldn't recommend this. Let's install it in our computer. How much did I pay for that? $56? I mean, capacity for capacity, that's not a terrible deal, but for like a piece of crap SSD like this one, that's not a good deal. Oh boy. When your SLI still uses a lowercase i because you haven't updated any of your materials since like 2000, <laughs> oh boy. Now let's have a look at our connectors here. So we've got two leads, each of which are a Molex and a SATA. Wow, this wiring, it's so cheap. Even the plastic for the connectors feels cheap. On a positive note, I do think we have all the connectors we need. Four pin for the CPU. 24 pin for the motherboard, six pin for, oh right, graphics card. So, this one we're pretty sure is a ripoff. Actually, how much did, speaking of ripoffs, how much did I pay for this piece of garbage? $31. 31 bucks? That's overpriced. Not that you should ever use even like a good $31 power supply in like a decent machine. Uh, power supply is one of those things. It's just not worth it to cheap out on. And wow, look at this thing. So if I had to guess, I would say that this is a 460 Ti or a 560. What is it? That is a 1060. A 1060? It doesn't even have a six pin power connector on it. 1060, my ass. Wait. NVIDIA's 10 series doesn't even have VGA support. Oh, you. How much did I pay for this? $45. 45 bucks. Well, at least the price was right. All right. Let's go ahead and install this piece of hot garbage. Now, normally your power supply is supposed to be the one that comes with your mounting screws, but either they fell out of the gaping hole in the bottom of the box or they just weren't included. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna salvage um, a couple of what appear to be power supply compatible screws, but that seem to have been intended for expansion cards. So what's our total bill for the tower? $380 with the air cooler option. That is brutal. That is so much more than I would pay for this. Now our PC is done, but what we still don't know is how true any of the manufacturer's claims were about their products. To find that out, we're gonna have to actually install Windows on it and fire it up. But before we can do that, of course, we're gonna need some peripherals. Let's start with the Zulang Wolf Rainbow Light K16 Game Keyboard. Wow. This may be the lightest keyboard that I have ever felt. Then also from the same brand, I think, although this time it's in Chinese instead of English, but it's the same logo here. Uh, we've got some kind of gaming mouse, I guess. <laughs> that is quite literally the spongiest click that I have ever felt on anything. You can even see a lot of that travel is being absorbed by the PCB underneath. See how much that port is moving? That is grody. Okay, this I've actually seen. This mouse pad is a pretty good deal. All right, how much did the peripherals cost us? And that includes the mouse pad? Well, at least the price is right for the peripherals because these are definitely like $10 worthy peripherals over here. All right, so this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Our epic gaming setup is now ready for a Windows install and a gaming test. We'll be right back. All right, so we're getting some games downloading. We're gonna get some drivers installed, but before we do that, I've got an update for you. This power supply was even worse than we expected. 
Not only did it suck, it didn't work at all. So we had to pull in just a, a TX750 in order to get the system powered up at all. The good news is that once we did that, we were at least able to get Windows installed. Yeah, it's clear by this point that this is not a build that you guys would want to emulate, but get subscribed if you're not already because we're going to have a Ryzen build guide coming up pretty soon that's going to be more uh, by the book. <laughs> now let's take some time to explore what kind of hardware we've really ended up with here. So we'll fire up hardware info, fire up our device manager, and uh, see what we're looking at. One thing I figured out already is this computer is not very fast. All right, so we're gonna start with Device Manager here. You can see all of our drivers auto-installed for like our chipset and all that kind of stuff. It's older hardware, so Windows just knows what to do with that. So it turns out this is in fact a Core i3-2130, so that's good, I guess. Okay, all right, Gigabit Ethernet, blah, blah, everything here looks fine, but we don't have a GPU driver yet, so that's not showing up. So it says here, We've got a GTX 1050 Ti. We've actually got the NVIDIA drivers unpacking in the background here, but we fire up hardware info and this is hilarious. Sandy Bridge processor, fake NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti fake. It's not, it's not, one fake is not enough for this. Two fakes. So this is a GF116, which if I recall correctly, is Fermi. That is an old, old GPU. Unfortunately, because it's not reporting anything here, we have no way of knowing at this time which one it is. So the only way to find out is going to be to try and get some real drivers installed so that it can hopefully identify itself correctly. So let's try the NVIDIA installer here and see what happens. Oh wow, it successfully installed the driver. It still reports as a 1050 Ti, interesting. So I thought we were actually going to have to install off the included driver disc with like these hacky drivers on it. See, that looks really legitimate. But it seems like the driver did manage to install and they have even tricked NVIDIA control panel into thinking that this is a 1050 Ti. Now with that said, we haven't tried to launch a game yet. All right, so we've run into our first hiccup while attempting to press Alt-Z to see just a quick and dirty frame counter in the game, um, I got into GeForce Experience here and went to configure my settings. And theoretically, we meet the system requirements because we have a 600 series or higher, but in practice, the, the configuration button just doesn't work. And when you go to press Alt-Z, nothing comes up because no, this is not in fact a 600 series GPU. So we're just gonna have to eyeball it. <laughs> Yay, oh no. So the good news is this is running smoothly. The bad news is that this is Rocket League. It's not exactly known for being a particularly demanding title. And I'm dead. We found our problem. Fermi only had HDMI 1.3. So that was limited to 2048 by 1536 at 75 Hertz. That's a little bit, not quite enough for 2560 by 1440, 60 Hertz, which is the native resolution of this monitor. So when we try to run it, uh, confusion ensues. So I think the last thing for us to do is figure out exactly what graphics card we're dealing with here. So we're gonna go ahead and run 3D Mark. We're gonna use the DirectX 11 Firestrike and we're gonna have a look at what kinds of systems perform similarly to ours in GPU performance. And it crashed. What can you tell me about this error? The workload produced no results. So this could be either of a couple things. Uh, it could be that 3D Mark was expecting the GPU to support features that it in fact didn't, and some kind of error occurred, or it could be part of 3D Mark's anti-cheating procedures to double check if something is misreporting itself as something else so that people couldn't, you know, flash RTX 2080 Ti's to GTX 1050 Ti's and then, you know, completely dominate the leaderboards. Um, either way, it looks like we will not, in fact, be able to run 3D Mark to validate what our graphics card is. Which at this point in the video, I think is fine anyway, because it really doesn't change the conclusion. Anytime you're buying something and what you get is 
not what it said it was, that's a bad deal. And frankly speaking, even most of the things that were what they said they were going to be weren't amazing deals either. So the old adage definitely holds true here. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. I think the cooler is about the only thing in this computer that I think is even remotely worth getting. It's got pretty cool RGB lighting effects and for what, 17 bucks? I guess it's all right. Speaking of all right, our sponsor. Knock, knock. I don't want any. Ha, ah, get it? I don't have to say who's there because I've got a Ring doorbell. <laughs> Ring wants you to know who's at your front door without even getting up. And the Ring doorbell camera kit includes their video doorbell 2, spotlight cam, and solar security sign. The video doorbell 2 has a motion sensing camera with 1080p HD resolution and 160 degrees of vision. It features two-way audio and it's powered by either a battery or 8 to 24 volt AC doorbell wiring. The spotlight camera is 1080p as well and features two-way talk as well as LED lights, battery or solar powered in this case, and it can also act as a siren. And their solar security sign is designed to act as a general deterrent since they know that they're going to be monitored if they're going to be close to your property. The entire kit is great since you can use it to turn away unwelcome guests. And my personal favorite, of course, is letting the Amazon delivery driver to know to know, wait, wait, hold on a second, I'm coming. Don't leave, don't leave with my package I wanted today. So get some peace of mind with the Ring Doorbell Camera Kit. It's compatible with iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, and we've got it linked in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If you wanna buy a GPU that's not a scam, check out our recent GPU buyer's guide. It covers everything that's current in the market at a bunch of different price points. See ya. Ow, my toe. Ah, oh, sandals. Okay, it's the one disadvantage. There you go, guys. I think that's where I hit it. So whatever happened here, <laughs> someone was not happy about delivering this package.